started. Uh, thanks everybody for showing up. I, uh, I'm very pleased to be here. I know um, it's been easier to get to this conference than other ones, but it's nice to be able to see everybody today as well. Um, special thanks to planners and Rich uh, on the planners uh, team and to Trevor for Trevor Grant for organizing the Mahout track. Um, my session today is about running Apache Mahout on Zeppelin. Uh, give me a heads up if uh, sound is weird or anything. Uh, you know, feel free to unmute yourself and, and give me a holler because I will be looking at the slide instead of this. Uh, so well, I'll be talking about Apache Mahout on Zeppelin, which is a project that we've actually been um, working on as a project for, for quite some time. Um, my uh, role on Mahout is uh, I've been on the PMC for, for several years and have been chair for two years. Um, and so I've, I've seen uh, a lot of different changes uh, over the years in Mahout. Uh, it's actually changed from um, an all, you know all-in-one encompassing um, recommender system, clustering system, classification system, uh, plus uh, web serving tool um, to something we've we've actually pared pared way down um, in recent years so that uh, it serves a purpose of being able to be a simpler uh, system to do matrix math on. So in a nutshell, that is that is where I'm coming from here. Um, so why would you choose Mahout to do your matrix math? Uh, assuming you're doing matrix math for linear algebra, uh, the rationale for using Mahout at this point is uh, to be able to have a simpler syntax for experimentation for building uh, algorithms and building models uh, without having to learn a, uh, a specific library's quirks and uh, which API calls to make. Um, I'll show some of the simpler uh, syntax uh, later when we get into a notebook, uh, but I will share these slides uh, in the right location. And uh, this is uh, the reference uh, that uh, summarizes all of this, this, this work that has been added to Mahout in the past few years. Uh, it really uh, is focused on people who come from a, a math background or an R background uh, or a MATLAB background and who are accustomed to being able to express vectors, matrices, and uh, arithmetic with them uh, using simpler syntax. Uh, and then beneath that, supporting that, is uh, the capability of being able to run large distributed math uh, on multiple different compute platforms. Uh, not just uh, compute engines like Spark or Flink, which have been built as a, uh, a pluggable framework where you can choose to do Spark if you're doing a certain kind of calculation, or if you want to use Flink to do some streaming calculations. You can very often use the same code that you wrote uh, for Spark uh, with the Flink engine. Um, usually the, the things that are different will be a different set of imports at the top, but the, the code will often be um, almost 100% uh, reusable. And then uh, as well as the compute engine or framework uh, that, that does the computation, um, who took a lot of uh, effort uh, to be able to pull the mathematics out of the JVM, then do them directly on the CPU. Additionally, to be able to take advantage of multi-core CPUs and be able to uh, take uh, take whatever calculation is being done and parcel it out to different uh, to the different cores, so that you get parallelism par parallelism out of the out of the box with uh, with doing that, and also uh, capable capable of running uh, directly on NVIDIA GPUs. We have a couple of different uh, translation layers that make that make that possible, um, but the uh, the the approach to doing that is basically transparent to the user. Uh, you write the code once, uh, you can tell the code to run on the JVM, on the CPU, on multi-core CPU or GPU, and it will handle it. So in that sense, uh, moving from prototype to production can be a lot easier than with other systems where either uh, some other, you know, other infrastructure changes need to be made and or code needs to be translated from something like R or SAS into something that is built for uh, built for distributed work. 
So it is um, it is a very niche product. It's um, you know the project is very small, but uh, but we have we have some devoted followers, and uh, and we all we all enjoy working on it. So um, so why would you use Mahout in a notebook? Uh, is a question that comes up, and I will go on record as being early uh, to the notebook hating game. I posted this in reply to my friend and co -ho, co uh, podcast co-host Joel. Uh, he was getting started uh, trying to get, I think, Jupyter notebook working, and he was complaining in public. And so I took the advantage to uh, the opportunity to let him know that I was skeptical about notebooks being a necessary uh, a necessary tool. Uh, and I am very proud to say, you know, I may have planted the seed because if you look at the timestamps here, he he built a bit, small cottage industry around uh, being the I don't like notebooks guy. Uh, and so um, I think he gave this talk one time, but it's it's become uh, a repertoire for uh, what people uh, know him by. So, uh, but that's tongue in cheek, of course, because um, I, you know, I. It, in, in undergrad, uh, I was introduced to Mathematica. I know people who grew up in MATLAB, and it, you can't deny that being able to uh, to do your work in uh, in a convenient place that organizes it into cells, has an interactive environment, um, and lets you share notebooks between team members, and then is actually something that you can just hop on in a web browser or something like that. Is uh, is a is there? Th those are a lot of advantages. And you know we we see this in in the market with tons of notebook systems. Google has Colab, and there are you know, there's Jupiter. Um, I, I know the Spark people have uh, have notebooks. So it's something that in order to in order to to appeal to people who want to work that way, uh, we actually spend a lot of effort to to make it easy to get Mahout running in a notebook. I will say one caveat to saying it's less intimidating. If the installation is done for you, it it is a lot less intimidating. But if you really if you really wanted to set up a a shared notebook system for a team and have that be um, something that's maintained, it's not it's not it's not a zero amount of work. So I think that what you'll see is that there are some some pros and cons, and there are some you know the, some of the advantages to using notebooks are that you can spin them up in a Docker container, for instance, which we're going to show you how to do. Uh, next question is why would you choose Zeppelin as your notebooking system, and what Zeppelin has over other competitors is it uh, is Polyglot, so they actually have uh, more than a dozen interpreters that uh, work out of the box. Uh, it's extensible so that you can uh, include your own uh, your own interpreter. Uh, if you want, we can just look at the um, supported interpreters here. It's actually quite a few, you know. Uh, you get a ton with JDBC for free. Uh, so any number of databases that I think anybody would be using these days is supported. Uh, Pig, if you're still using that or maintaining it from from people ten years ago, on down to you know proprietary things like BigQuery, uh, Python, lots and lots of uh, things that people are using, Elastic, etc. So. Um, it's very well supported, and it actually is extensible, which is which is very nice. Um, and so Mahout's DSL Samsara fits in very well because it it is a it is a, a very uh, self-contained small subsection of a language, and so it's it's very much in the in the range of something like SQL. Um, so there are a few different ways to set Mahout up in Zeppelin. I'm calling this the hard way. Um, and actually, this was the way that uh, I think uh, I think Trevor was doing a few years ago. Uh, he actually has a very uh, useful post about this. Uh, and again, when you get the slides, you can follow this link, or you can just browse the uh, the website, the Mahout website. Uh, as you can see, there are quite a few steps here. You will download and install Zeppelin. You will uh, build Mahout from scratch. You will build Zeppelin from scratch. Um, you will then make sure Zeppelin's running. Uh, you will dig in, add an interpreter. You will then get to an interpreter's page where you need to tell Zeppelin uh, what kinds of things it needs to know about uh, how to write things to disk or you know, how, how to do other things. Uh, then you'll add dependencies, so a bunch of jars which, which are required to run Mahout. Um, and so, you know, it's not it's not a ton of work. Um, I I have done it, um, and but again, I've I've also set up interpreters in Zeppelin before with other tools, 
there are a lot of gotchas. Uh, you know, if documentation gets out of date, you're kind of out of luck. You need to go ask for help. Um, so it, it works. And and you know, if if the stars align, you know, it's it's easy. Uh, and here, there's an example of being able to use Zeppelin with um, you know where you could build out. And I'll show this in the uh, in a notebook. You will build out a, a a function in 3D, and then what we do here is we write the result to the resource pool that Zeppelin maintains. Lo and behold, we can pop open a Spark R shell and pull that object out of the resource pool and then plot it. So it's a nice, easy way to be able to hop between tools and uh, and uh, see results. Um, so it's not like I said, it's. I'm calling it the hard way, and it, it it it's not that hard. But fortunately, the uh, Zeppelin people built a script that does it for you. So, what we what they will have you do is uh, download Zeppelin, install it, and add a add a Mahout interpreter. All these links are here. It turns out that they they have a Docker image that you can run. So that's actually a nice uh, a nice way to get started with Zeppelin very easily. It will it will pull down the image and it will run it, and it will let you just visit. Um, or 8080 in a browser, and you will have Zeppelin running. You can also build it from source. I think that um, if you're really going to use this for for something, you would want to either build from source or use a maintained package. Um, you know, the reason to build from source would be that you wanted to change the navigation and turn this into your own, you know, your own uh, company branded uh, notebook or something like that, or you wanted to uh, make it so that out of the box uh, you had interpreters that you wanted to add and things like that. Um, I think that you know they they've actually made this 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 easy. You just run this Python script, uh, add Mahout. So that's that's a lot simpler than than the way we used to do it. Um, so I but I would say that this this would be a good way to make sure that you have you know a good amount of control um, that you can uh, modify your instance of Zeppelin how you want, uh, and then you can make sure that uh, that it's it's uh, it's built right for your team. There is now a quick start way, which means that you can just install Docker and pull down a specific image. Uh, this image will be maintained uh, soon in the Mahout repo. So we will be actually changing our quick start page to let people know that this is a good way to get started. Uh, and what that means is that uh, it is as simple as doing a Docker pull on a specific image and then doing a, a Docker run on that image, and then uh, visiting this uh, this address in your browser. Um, and I have this running in the background, so you know we're not seeing uh, Docker pull down all the artifacts and start up. But here is a here is a, a, a Zeppelin. I've made the text bigger so it's more legible for the screen share. Um, it actually comes with some very nice inbuilt stuff, a Flink tutorial, Python tutorial, tutorials for R, Spark, uh, how to use Zeppelin. You can see a notebook I've started here. Uh, it includes you know, documentation, how to get involved, uh, bugs that you might want to know about, uh, where to get the code on GitHub, things like that. Uh, just a quick tour for people who have not seen Zeppelin before. Uh, here would be your user. Uh, you can find out about Zeppelin. You can go to repos where you can store uh, notebooks for yourself or for your team. Uh, and there are some other things. But digging in here is uh, the place where you would set up interpreters. So you can see that there are already all of these interpreters set up. And that, that means Zeppelin is agnostic as far as what code it runs. But you can tell it, I want to I use Cassandra for a data source. Here is where it lives. Here are some properties about it that you need to know in order to connect to the right Cassandra cluster. Um, and so you can see Cassandra is very complicated as you know, you, if you've run Cassandra, you know that there's a lot of levers. Um, but for something like Mahout, what we would do is create a new interpreter. And this is the old way to you know, give it a name, put, give it a group like uh, in Spark, and tell it a few things about uh, where to find it, uh, where and, and upload. Uh, jars let you know let either give it a path or upload it to to where Zeppelin is uh, so it knows how to run the code that you're going to be running. So that is you know that's a very quick tour of what uh, what you do to to add a um, an interpreter. Uh, but here we have some live code running for 
the uh, for the notebook. Let me just check in. Any questions here? Okay, none yet. Feel free to put questions in the chat. We'll uh, we'll get back to them in the Q and A session. Um, so this is what Zeppelin looks like. If you haven't seen it, it actually should look familiar if you have used Mathematica or uh, Jupyter or um, any of the other multitude of notebooking tools. Uh, you have a cell here. You and can add code. You can edit this code freely. You can say, uh, you know, hi. You can do whatever you want. And then you can also run it by uh, hitting the run button, or you can do a shift return, and it will execute that code. Uh, so I'm just setting up some imports so that so that uh, my code knows about some things that are in uh, Samsara, which is Mahout's DSL. Um, and here are some examples of this uh, of of how you work with vectors and matrices. So we'll just run through a few of those uh, examples here. Uh, you can declare a vector as a dense vector by calling it uh, this way, or you can use this inbuilt method. Um, so we are just going to set those up. And here's what they look like. It looks like sparse matrix uh, terminology. These happen to be dense vectors. Uh, but it, it, you can see that you know the first position is uh, contains a 1, the second position contains 1.1, 1 .1, et cetera. Uh, setting up a dense matrix is similar. You can use this uh, starter function, dense. It'll be a three by three matrix, uh, and it will be called A. And here you see it represented. There's three rows, and there are three columns, and it has the correct uh, values that we were expecting, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Oops, I meant to have four, five, six. Anyway, that has three, four, five. Um, whatever you give it, it will be. Here we can set up a diagonal matrix that has the value 10 in the, uh, in the diagonal. So these are just helper functions that come along. Um, and there are, there are several um, uh, explained in the documentation on the website and on that paper I, re I referenced as well. Uh, you can set up a diagonal matrix that, which has specific values in, uh, in each position. You can create a 10 by 10 identity matrix, which, as you can see, it uh, it is a matrix in that uh, there are 10 rows, and only the position that is filled in is referenced here as one. All the other positions are, are uh, uh, have zero in them. Here we can pull out a value of an existing matrix using the index 2, which would be the third position. So what we had in there was 1.2. We can also set the value in that position, in that vector, uh, to 3 if we want to do that. Uh, and then I think that what we would then see is what dense vector looks like now is. And uh, there's tab completion, by the way, here. So you can see that if you start typing, you can uh, just tell it that, uh, yeah, that's the one I wanted. So sure enough, we have set the uh, set a second or you know third position to three. Uh, we have uh, pulling, we can pull out a value of a matrix similarly using the indexing of uh, row and column. So D would then be 5.0 given our uh, given our matrix A. And likewise, you can set A to have three in the second row, third position, which we have here. There is some uh, convenience uh, access functions where you can get just a section of a matrix A. So in this case, this, this syntax means give me uh, matrix A from row 0 to 1, uh, columns 1 to 2. Uh, and so when we execute that, then we see that B is indeed, uh, let's see, what was A before? Yeah. So what we have here is in row zero and one, columns one, you know, uh, one and two, uh, we pulled out this smaller square block of A. This, uh, this is a handy feature for doing distributed uh, matrix math because often when you are running big computations, you will want to be able to um, so-called blockify a large matrix and take out blocks of certain size, which will then each block would be sent to a different uh, node or uh, or or uh, or 
core to, to do a calculation on. So this blocky, this blockification is, um, is a very handy way of doing that. Uh, we, have similar, we have similar operations to what you would find if you're using BLATS. Uh, you know, you can do, so here we're setting two vectors up. One is uh, one through five. The next one, B, is six through 10. You can do uh, any number of these operations, like you can add uh, A to B, and you'll get that result. You can do uh, subtract B from A, uh, and hit execute, and you will get some negative numbers. Um, and you can also do the same kind of uh, addition and subtraction with scalars. So here you have A plus five, and element-wise, you've added five to each element. Same with the, you know, subtracting. And uh, we have uh, element-wise uh, multiplication of vectors. So this would be multiplying each, each element of the vector together to have a new vector, which I think if we check the math is correct. And you know, similarly, we can do that with a scalar. There are a lot of convenience functions. I think that um, this is the kind of thing that really is at the, the heart of what uh, is appealing about Mahout for uh, mathematicians and uh, experimenters. Uh, being able to do this kind of operation without having to learn a cumbersome library that will do these these uh, these operations. Um, here we have matrix math. And it is I think this is MATLAB terminology to have the uh, the matrix math surrounded by parens or uh, percentages. Here we'll set up another matrix C uh, to be this matrix, and then we're going to multiply A and C together. We see that it prints out C, and then it does that math. So. PG, very easy um, and very straightforward, very readable. Um, here are a few examples of uh, some matrix decomposition. Here's Cholesky decomposition of matrix A. Um, so we get a result that is, you know, has this type. Uh, the nice thing that uh, Zeppelin brings to bear that is similar to having something like an IDE, which lets you inspect what uh, what's inside a, uh, an entity is, you have to have completion of all the methods that we have here. So uh, in Cholesky uh, decomposition, your, your result will be a matrix times another matrix. And uh, so to get those matrices, what you'll have is uh, this function, which gets, gets L, or you might want to get uh, permuted L. Let's see what the result is there, et cetera. Uh, so that's the nice thing about working inside of a notebook is that you have some of those um, uh, IDE type uh, functions that you would you would expect to have. Um, here's an example of doing singular value decomposition on A. We have the results of uh, two matrices U and B uh, of different shapes, and then we have S, which is another vector. Uh, we can then inspect U. Uh, all the functions that are available to you as a matrix are uh, prompted, so you can check to see if it is equal to something. You can multiply. Uh, you can do all the other, uh, you know, um, assignment uh, plus arithmetic operators, and then these are all of the uh, the functions that are available to to a matrix. So you can go see what's its determinant. You can then, uh, you know, get an iterator over it and do something for each row. Um, you can figure out how many columns are there. You know, uh, so all these things are inbuilt. As we knew, it was three. Um, so there, you know, that that's a quick tour of some of the the mathematics that's available um, in Mahout uh, in this notebook environment. Uh, here's finally an example of um, some code that we will write in Scala, and this generates a a, a three dimensional uh, surface that uh, is it has as each point it is a position on the x y plane. And then it has a certain height in the z direction as its z uh, value. And what we will do at the end is when we get, um, we will convert that uh, data set to a tab separated uh, format. And we will put it into the shared uh, context uh, that, that Zeppelin maintains. We'll run this real quick. It, what our result is is a tab set. This is not what we're looking at, but the tab separated uh, result is now inside of Zeppelin's uh, shared context called Z. And what we could do if we wanted to be cute, 
I didn't finish out and do the plotting, but that's a good exercise for the, for the viewer. However, what we can do is reach into that context, get that tab separated uh, value out, and then we can look and see what it is. And this is using Python. So what we've done is uh, we will use Python to read out that object. We see that it is a tab separated. You can see the tabs in here, tab separated uh, and uh, new line separated file containing uh, three points per row. So what we've done there is we've taken some Scala code, done some operations, stored the result in uh, the shared context, and then just jumped over to Python to pick it up. Um, so that is that is the tour of Zeppelin that we had uh, prepared. Um, I'm going to hop over and see if there are any questions. Just Trevor um, making smiley faces. Um, so back to the slides. Uh, that's a demo. Again, you know, if if uh, anybody wants to try this out, uh, just uh, get these slides after the talk uh, in the the right place. I know that there will be a shared drive, and they'll be they'll be shared out uh, at the same time as the videos, I believe. Um, and so I'm going to wind this one up by talking about how to get started with with this yourself. I think, um, as mentioned, there is a, a new version out this week. We just uh, just finished voting on it, uh, this 14.1 release, which was a major refactor from a new contributor, uh, not new to Apache, but new to Mahout, Chris Dutz, and uh, so many thanks to him. Uh, we have uh, a cleaner build now. It's actually a lot easier to navigate for, for new and old users. So I would say if you are interested in trying this out, I would grab that Docker image, uh, fire it up, see if you, if you like uh, doing your work inside of that notebook. Um, get yourself subscribed to the user list so that you can ask questions and you can keep tabs on what's happening. Um, there's always people monitoring that. Uh, you can always uh, get an answer uh, when you when you need help or have questions. Uh, be patient, but, uh, but there will be an answer at some point. Uh, get yourself eventually a binary or source build. Uh, and the links to all these things are, are in this talk, so you can, you can just jump in there. Uh, you can try it with or without Zeppelin. I personally think that um, you know it, it's it's not that hard to get started in the shell. Uh, so if you want to get that you know, get started with that, you can always try it out. And if you get stuck, ask for help. Um, and you know, uh, definitely welcome uh, contribution as far as uh, if you run into some documentation that needs some work, which I guarantee you will, uh, because we have some stuff to update after the new release. Uh, if you find any bugs, if you run into some bugs, um, you know, uh, nothing is beyond the capability of uh, anybody who can read and write, uh, write some software. So I, I know I personally got involved in this project and open source in general by discovering a bug on a, uh, on a, on a release and jumped in, fixed it, and, and uh, got hooked that way. Um, eventually, you know, if you want to add some features, there are actually some very convenient ways of uh, writing new algorithms, uh, contributing um, uh, tests to 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 the to the source tree, uh, and so it's actually the onboarding uh, has improved a lot on this project in the past few years. Um, stick around for the next talk. A few of us from the um, the project management committee uh, will be giving a talk about how to get involved. In Mahout in particular, but uh, you know it, it actually generalizes very well to um, to open source in general. Um, and with that, I think that is it for me. Uh, here's how to get in touch with me on email: uh, akm at apache.org. Um, any questions? I'm happy to take those now. Yes, let me stop sharing so we don't have this Alice in Wonderland thing. Okay, so some questions. Uh, machine learning functions available in Zeppelin for Mahout? Yes, Patrick, there are actually quite a few machine learning algorithms already built in Mahout that are available either in, um, if you if so if you run Mahout inside of Zeppelin, you can use them in there. You can use them outside of Zeppelin. You can use the, uh, the shell, or you can actually include uh, the Mahout jars um, using Maven or something like that for a project that you're building. Um, and I think that uh, as far as building recommenders, that's one of the things that people, it's, it's one of Mahout's work, workhorse uh, functions. And there was a talk earlier, I believe, from uh, Pat on building a recommender system. So I would say 
Um, look at the look at the at the schedule just back up a bit, and I think that uh, that, that you'll enjoy looking at his talk when it's published as video, um, uh, and looking at his slides too. Okay, so videos should post next week. It sounds like. Uh, so Patrick's also asking what kind of, kind of data sources. That really depends on what your use case is, uh, as uh, what and what your business needs are. So people will pull data from live databases, from uh, text uh, text logs, uh, from tab separated uh, files, uh, Parquet files. Um, um, so Sparks, you know, Spark basically speaks Parquet as a as a first class language. Um, that's a that's a very popular uh, data format to to load from. Um, and you know all the formats that you that you would hear about, whether it's market matrix format or or parquet or anything like that, those are often either just a, a matrix of numbers or they are um, uh, you know a two or three uh, item per row file where you have you know a user ID, you have an item ID, and you either have you know a fact about that interaction, whether somebody interacted with a video one time or you know, somebody uh, purchased a product three times or something like that. Um, so it, it really it comes down to pretty simple, pretty simple um, set of set of uh, data that, that people are usually uh, pulling in, um, and it's the formats are usually tailored to. If you're building a recommender, you really just need to boil it down to what what very small set of features you're, you're going to use. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Patrick. Awesome, and thanks for showing up. I appreciate uh, appreciate having uh, having everybody here. Thank you. Um, any other questions for anybody else? Um, happy to chat. Uh, just free form. Uh, thanks, everybody. And I think uh, this is such a nice format. Maybe we will. Um, We'll set up Twitch streams for uh, every time we set up a new uh, release, a new version of Hoot, so we can show people what's what's new. Uh, it's gonna it's really nice to connect like that. So, uh, Trevor, I guess uh, if questions are done, anybody else looking for the chat window? Let me know. Well, thanks very much. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day and uh, take care and stay safe out there. All right.